Hello and welcome to the Brutal Iron Gym Podcast, where our goal is to cut through the BS and deliver the brutal truth about topics related to health and happiness. Today's podcast number 1,632. The topic is training and the title is Program Considerations When Struggling to Gain Size. Hmm. So in yesterday's podcast, we actually talked about the nutrition aspect of this. So the podcast was titled, How to Eat More When You Feel Like You Can't. So we had a listener that checked in on me last week. I wasn't feeling very good last week, so I missed a couple podcasts. They sent in just seeing how I was. And then also, um, I followed up with them and asked, you know, hey, you know, thanks for your support. Do you have any questions you ever want me to address? And they brought up the fact that they were struggling to gain size. So we talked about, you know, how could they eat more? in yesterday's podcast and then in today's podcast I wanted to cover kind of what programming considerations you would make. So if you're eating as much as you can and you want to get bigger, you want to build more and more size, what can we do? How can we modify that? So not only is it trying to get in more calories and I shared all the secrets of how to do that yesterday, but we also want to look at our training. We want to make sure that our training is supporting our goal. Often when I talk to people and I'm like, you know, are you lifting you know, hard and heavy, or you lifting often, then they say yes. But then when we look in the details, there are some details that are off. So I wanted to discuss some things that I would typically look at or see in programming if people were struggling to gain size. So you can kind of look through this in your own programming. And even if you're not struggling to gain size, you just want to gain as much as you can and you want it to be efficient, you'd want to look at these things as well. So some of the top considerations, what I look at is does what they do cause muscle damage? And an example of this is I had a female one time, I remember she was telling me she was struggling to build her, her bench press and she wanted kind of like bigger, more muscular arms. And she was doing a program written by God knows who. And a couple of the exercises, like she was doing like tricep like kickbacks. Uh, she was doing skull crushers. But she was smaller body frame, wasn't very strong. So the most she could do for kickbacks was eight pounds. And she was doing skull crushers with 12 pound dumbbells. That's just not heavy enough, not remotely heavy enough to cause any tissue stress. So she had no need to be doing isolative movements for her triceps, considering that they were so weak that the weight load that she could use in the isolation movements would have been worthless. This is why she was struggling to make any progress. So we started working together. I gave her all compound movements, like variations of presses and whatnot. And then all of a sudden she started making progress, started getting a lot stronger. So unfortunately, whoever was writing her program uh, did not make it personalized. She was just following some generic program they would have given any athlete, uh, anybody they were working with. And it didn't match her abilities, didn't match her strength. So some of the things she was doing, just like it was a good movement, just not for her because she wasn't strong enough to actually use a significant amount of weight. Likewise, I've also had people where, like I had one guy, I remember he was telling me he was struggling to gain size in his back. And I was like, well, what do you do? You know, and we were talking through his programming and I'm like, you train your back four times a week. How the hell is it not growing? Well, I had him send me a video of him doing cable seated rows one time. And he was doing 300 pounds on the weight stack. It was a full weight stack. And I don't know what he was doing. <laughs> it looked like every muscle in his body. I think his, like, his earlobes were contracting to try to move that thing. He was just throwing it around. There was a no mind-muscle connection. It was a million pounds, a million miles an hour. And I was like, oh, for the love of God. I was like, what are you doing, dude? You know? And he's like, well, the, you know, the heavier you lift, the bigger you grow. And I was like, not like that. <laughs> I was like, well, we got some work to do. So we started kind of isolating things out, bringing his weights down so he could actually use only the muscles we wanted, not every muscle. Uh, you know, so it was just way overwhelming. So some people not strong enough. Some people are too damn strong for their own good. So we have to kind of look through and say, okay, well, what are we doing? When we do our movements, are we lifting heavy enough that it's impactful to, to create muscle damage? Or are we maybe lifting so heavy that we're not having that mind-muscle connection? So one of the podcast listeners recently shared a podcast, a really good podcast, number 220. If you want to find older podcasts, go to our website, www.brutalironjim.com. There's instructions on there on how to get to older podcasts. So 
Podcast 220 is a training podcast titled Muscle Intention versus Movement Intention. And that helps you kind of work on the mindset of having mind-muscle connection. You want to make sure that the muscle you want to grow is the one that's doing all the work, not every other muscle. <laughs> so that's a really good one to listen to if you feel like maybe I'm lifting too heavy. If you know you're not you're not strong enough, then you want to start to get rid of isolation movements and do more compound movements. So rather than doing a chest press and then a tricep isolation, do two chest presses because your triceps are going to be involved when you do chest presses. So we would look through and we'd say, okay, what are we doing here? Do we do we have heavy enough movements? Do we have too heavy of movements? Do we need to work on mind muscle connection? Uh, also, some people are too perfect with their movements. So they'll be like, well, I'm doing, you know, 10 reps and all 10 look like the first rep. And then they just stop. And you'd be like, well, was that hard? They would say yes. And they're like, they're right. They're not lying. They, it was hard. But then I asked them, do you think you could have done more? And they're like, well, I don't know. Like, I, I think the quality would have went down. I was like, well, go ahead and try a couple more. Just like next time you do that, see if you can do that same way. Instead of doing 10, see if you can do 12. If you do 12 successfully, see if you can do 13. If you can do 13 successfully without, you know, dropping the dumbbell on your face, maybe try 14. And I remember one client, I forget the exact numbers, but they were doing sets of 10. And then I had them do this. And one time they were able to work up to a set of 18 with the same thing that they were doing for 10. And I was like, oh, okay, there we go. <laughs> so, so we definitely had way more in us, but they didn't know how, you know, how, how bad was for them to break down. Like how, what, how, how ugly is it allowed to get where it's still helpful? So this is where having somebody watch you lift and then do weekly video reviews, which I do with my clients, is very helpful because you can see what they're doing and you can see, okay, they they're, they believe they're doing their best. Absolutely. And they are. But you can almost like teach them that there's better best to have. <laughs> there's more in there, you know, and that can be super helpful. But when we look at like, you want to consider all the things I just said. Uh, that's more of, like, conceptual stuff. I didn't really give you any, like, specific things, <laughs> uh, like, steps to do. But those are all conceptual things to think through. So what I also look through and I say, okay, in what they're doing, do do the majority of their movements, and if I had to give percentages, because people love their numbers, uh, if I had to give percentages, say 70% of what you do should be between 20 to 40 seconds of time and attention. That's if you're like normal strength levels. If you're a little bit lower in strength, then 70% of what you should do uh, sh are doing should be between 30, 10 to 30 seconds of time and attention. Now, how do I define like low strength? If your squat and deadlift is less than two times of your body weight, if your bench is less than one times your body weight, then you're not low strength. I guess that's kind of an aggressive terminology and nobody wants to be classified as that. But your, your strength uh, would indicate that you can lift heavier things for shorter time and attention and that that'll actually help better create muscle damage for you. Whereas if somebody's stronger than that, then if they lift down to between 10 to 30 seconds all the time, they're actually going to accumulate some joint stress. So we want them more between 20 to 40 seconds. So if you can squat and deadlift around two times or more your body weight, if you can bench more than just your body weight, then 70% of what you do should be between 20 to 40 seconds. If you're below those strength numbers, then 70% of what you do should be between 10 to 30 seconds of time and attention. Now, why am I saying 70%? What do you do with the other 30? Well, 15% of what you do should be below that 10 to 20 second mark, which means you're working on strength stuff. And then another 15% should be above that 30 to 40 seconds, which means you're working on endurance stuff. So our endurance muscle fibers contribute about 15% of our overall size of muscle tissue. So it's important to actually dip into those every now and then because 15% is, you know, it's reasonable. It would be, it's, it's something to consider, significant. And then why we should dip into strength is because the stronger you get, it's like an investment to be able to lift heavier things in that 20 to 40 second time under tension range eventually. So it's like, it's like growth for the future. It's an investment growth. So 70% of what you do should be between 20 to 40 seconds. If you're a little bit lower in strength, uh, 10 to 30 seconds. And then 15% should be above that 40 second mark. 15% should be below that 10 second mark. Okay. 
So I kind of look through and I look and see what the person's doing. And if a lot of it's high reps uh, or high time and attention, maybe they move very slow. So they might be doing a set of 10, but it takes them a minute to do it. I'm like, oof, geez, a whiz, we got to speed you up a little bit. <laughs> or we have to get down to like sets of five because you move so damn slow. Uh, or if somebody moves and they do 10 reps in five seconds, it's like, hey, I got to slow you down. <laughs> so that way, um, you know, it kind of gets that better balance where the muscles are actually the focus and they're involved. Also, what I look at is intensity techniques. So if somebody has potential there they have room for more growth i mean more stress damage so their their recovery is okay they're not having joint pains there's really nothing hurting then you can add in more intensity techniques like rest pauses isometric holds at the end of of a working set drop sets things like that you can add in more intensity techniques and that can help gather more stress in their training without adding a lot more time now If somebody's recovery is kind of low and their joints are kind of hurting, you would want to drop or reduce intensity techniques. So it really depends when they're coming to me, you know, what's their recovery rate? What's their strength? uh, You know, how often do they train? If they don't train as often, we do need to do more intensity techniques. If they train more often, we need to do less intensity techniques. So there's a lot of personal variability which is why I love my job and why it's super fun and exciting. Uh, But there's a lot of things I would consider, and I want you to be aware of those things so you can think through those things. Now, one of the things I said was to include strength training. And the reason why, as we said, was it's an investment to be able to lift heavier things eventually in that 20 to 40 second time and attention range. So if I can do 50 pounds for a set of 10 on chest presses, if I can eventually do 60 pounds, or 70 pounds, I can get more and more muscle damage for the same set of 10 reps. So over time, I can get more muscle damage for the same amount of time in the gym. So that allows me to continue to grow. So how I've been able to grow, like I started lifting and I was a skinny fat 165. I'm now 266 and I'm actually leaner at 266 than I was at 165. So I'm 100 pounds heavier, but much leaner, way lower body fat percentage. And over time, I've been able to add 100 plus pounds of muscle uh, by doing slow investments of strength. When I started including strength training in my bodybuilding, which no one told you to do in the late 90s, damn it. uh, But when I started doing that, I started growing a lot bigger and it was a more of a continuous sustained growth. Uh, so really wish I would have been told to do that when I was younger. Uh, like a lot of the knowledge I was told when I was younger was you do strength training to be strong. No one really told me you do strength training to also get bigger because at the time I wasn't very strong. I mean, gosh, it took me, uh, I think it took me like eight, nine, ten years of training to be able to bench 225. It took me forever, forever. I trained for like eight years before I could deadlift 315 and it took me a long time to squat 315 actually like legit. It took me a long, long time to get strong. So I wasn't really motivated by strength when I was younger because I was just weak and I was like, I don't see that change anytime soon. (laughs) So I wanted to get bigger. So if somebody would have told me, hey, even though you're not strong, if you are to work on strength, it will help you get bigger. Then I would have done it more. You know, I wasn't going to do strength for strength's sake because it was so damn low. What did I care? You know, there were girls that were out squatting me on the track team. (laughs) And I remember looking at that and I was like, damn it. (laughs) So I was busting my butt and they would come in, just be BSing with their friends. And they're out squatting me. And I'm like, this is just so demoralizing. But uh, it was... It was good to eventually learn that strength was important, and I had to kind of start blending that in, and that did help me get a lot bigger. So I really want to encourage anybody, if you are going for muscle size, make sure you still include strength training. It will absolutely help. It will make an impact. Another thing I look at is to reduce unnecessary caloric like burning. So you don't want to burn calories if they're not directly related to muscle tissue damage. So we want to reduce like wasted activity. So sometimes if people are trying to superset and circuit a lot of things together uh, and you're really struggling for size, stop that. Slow everything down. Do every exercise individually. Really focus on how heavy you can move the weights. Now you'll see bodybuilders like um, Mila Sarchev is one of my favorite people like for coaching purposes. And I loved his physique uh, back in the day. 
but he does a lot of giant sets with his athletes. But they're already like freaking professional bodybuilders or they're going for a pro card. They don't have pr- trouble building size. So he'll do a lot of giant sets, which is like three exercise or four exercise, sometimes even five exercise circuits, as a way to kind of uh, prep them before big heavy movements. So giant sets and circuits are awesome. I use you know, circuits and people's programming all the time. But when I have somebody who's struggling to grow, I tend to back off on those kind of techniques and I have them focus on just straight sets, trying to maximize weight load, try to maximize muscle, uh, mind muscle connection. So that's one thing you can consider. I also would reduce or get rid of any cardio at the time of weight training. I'm actually not opposed to doing cardio outside of training, especially early in the morning. I really don't think doing cardio any other time of day is really useful if you're trying to build muscle tissue. But if you don't work out in the morning, getting up in the morning and doing 10 minutes of cardio is really good to spike hunger levels, and it'll get you eating earlier in the day, and it'll get you eating more throughout the day. So I am a big fan of if you're struggling to gain size, to get up and do some cardio at the very beginning of the day. Now, if you can train in the morning, Awesome. Best. Absolutely do that. But if you can't, then get up and do at least 10 minutes of cardio. Get something, some kind of movement, and that'll spark hunger. But other than the mornings, I would not suggest doing cardio uh, because it's just wasted calories, and you'd rather have those calories be going towards muscle growth, you know? Uh, You also, like I said, want to get rid of any excessive high rep or high volume type stuff. So you wanted to make sure, like we talked about, 70% of what you do should be between 20 to 40 seconds of time or attention. Only 15% should be above that. So if you're doing a lot of activities that are like 40 to 60 seconds or even longer than 60 seconds, you want to reduce those. Get those down to maybe, you know, just 15-ish percent of your training overall. So not very, like not very often. Cool. And then like uh, the last note I had there was to add that high, uh, that early morning cardio and that can help spike hunger. You'll end up eating way more calories than what you burn in like just going for a 10 minute walk. So that's really helpful. Like my wife and I, we have in our uh, home office, we have a cable stack from Sornex, which I've put flush with the wall so it actually doesn't stick out. So it's actually sideways against the wall. It's only, it's only four inches off the wall. Pretty badass. So my dad and I made a special bracket to set it up like that. So we have a cable station. We have power block dumbbells. We have some sliders, a couple bands, hip circle. And then we actually have a Bowflex. Um, I forget. It's got like M60X or some kind of thing. Like weird numbers but it's a bow flex but it's an elliptical pattern but it's a a vertical elliptical pattern not a horizontal elliptical pattern so it helps target the lower glutes so when you push through your heels and you put your hips behind your shoulders man is that a really good work for your lower glutes so we have my wife uh, we bought that initially for her to be able to do cardio while she's working from home but i started doing it as well so i do 10 minutes in the morning and man that does spike your hunger you start freaking getting hungry for breakfast real quick so i'll do that even when in time periods when i'm trying to gain size it's it, like i said it just really spikes hunger and it works really well so big fan of that but these were some considerations I thought it'd just be fun to discuss. That if you are struggling to gain muscle size, this is what you want to look at your program and kind of consider these elements and maybe make some changes. Okay. Now, if you want any help with that, of course, we have our one-on-one coaching. There's no contracts to any of our co- coaching. You can just sign up for a month or two. I'll help you, you know, game plan it and figure it all out. Then you can take with it and run with it on your own. We also have our live monthly programming service, which if you want to learn about that, you can go to our website, www.brutalirongym.com. There's actually a page titled Live Monthly Programming. And with that, what it is is you get a brand new program every four weeks, brand new exercises. Now, You can pick from programming options. Right now we have five. One is power building, which is power lifting and bodybuilding kind of combined. Uh, Now, if you just want power lifting, you just control your food and then make your caloric excess. Make sure it's not too excessive. Then you won't gain size. So power building is kind of our power lifting and bodybuilding combined. So I may rename that because I want people to know it's actually power lifting. So power lifting and bodybuilding combined. Then we have female shape development, pure bodybuilding program, our functional athleticism, and functional longevity. So you would pick between those. You get brand new programs every four weeks. Uh, and it's brand new exercises, all exercises have video tutorials with them. Uh, it's freaking awesome. Tons of information. And then you get a chance to ask any questions you want ever. It's 24-7. You can ask any question and get it answered one-on-one. So you pick a topic that you want to, like a program, topic then you get one-on-one education with it 
So amazing service, amazing service. So if you want that, it's only $50 a month. Really freaking cheap for unlimited education. (laughs) So check that out as well as our one-on-one services. And that can all help if you're having any troubles. Okay. If you need anything, reach out. My email is brutalironjim at gmail.com. If you like our podcast, please share it. The more people we share it with, the more people we can help. That's the whole point of why we do it. Just help people live their healthiest and happiest life. Thank you to those who donate to support the podcast. It does have a high hosting cost. I give it an hour, an hour to it every day. So I appreciate the funds as they help cover some of the chaos of the cost. Uh, so thank you. If you want to donate, you can do that on our website. Even just $5 a month, it definitely adds up. It definitely helps. I sincerely appreciate those who do that. And then if you like the information we share in our podcast, you can find more from us on our social media channels on Instagram and YouTube. You can find us and follow us under the name Brutal Iron Jim. As always, I hope this was helpful and thank you for listening.